You're listening to the Culips English podcast. To download the study guide for this episode, which includes the transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, real-world examples, and a quiz, visit our website culips.com. C U L I P S dot com. Hey, everybody. My name is Andrew. And I'm Suzanne. And you're listening to Culips. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, Andrew. How are you? I'm pretty well. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> just, just here in the Montreal rain. Montreal rain. Oh, that's so sad. It is. It's pretty gray. <laughs> pretty dark inside today. Suzanne, I've got a random question for you to start this episode. Okay, sure. Do you like eggplant? I love eggplant. <laughs> I'm Italian. Come on. I love eggplant. Yes. Eggplant parm, for sure. Mm. <laughs> the reason I ask is... I participated in a half marathon last weekend. Wow, that's awesome. And as a prize, I won a massive box of eggplants. <laughs> really? <laughs> really. <laughs> why? Like, I mean, that's awesome, but <laughs> why eggplants? Well... In Korea, this is the third marathon event that I've participated in. And there are cash prizes for the top three finishers. But if you're in the top 10 or top 20, then you usually receive a gift or a prize that is a local specialty. Nice. And this could include, I, I've won a massive three kilogram bag of organic sea salt before <laughs> and this time I won a bag a box of about 80 eggplants um, I, oh I guess they were the local specialty in the area where the marathon was held wow what are you going to do with all of those eggplants well I gave a lot of them away because my mom told me that eggplants don't keep very well. Um, no. So I was worried about that. So I gave some to my neighbor and some to my coworkers. And I still have maybe 10 or 20 in my fridge. And I've been eating eggplant with every <laughs> meal. I had three eggplants today. <laughs> wow. You know, you could make a... A jarred eggplant, you know, with like with uh, like garlic, like pickles. Can you pickle it? Yeah, or you know, you could roast them, and then mm -hmm. put them in a jar with olive oil and uh, garlic, and then you boil the jars so they, you know, like make the ah, little seal, the vacuum seal. Yeah, but I'm saying it doesn't doesn't have to be pickled it could be you know like a something you would put like a roasted eggplant later on you open the jar you could put it on toast ah like a spread or a dip yeah 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 that's a good idea actually i haven't really had eggplant too much um it it was definitely not a staple in my house growing up mm -hmm. and in korea I've had it from time to time. There's a really good Korean dish where there's uh, eggplant, I think that's been marinated in soy sauce. Okay. I enjoy that, um, but I've never cooked with it before. I've never bought it before. So really the only thing I know how to do with it is roast it and spread some olive oil and salt and pepper on it. And that's delicious, actually. So I've been quite yeah. happy with that. But I'm sure there's lots of different recipes out there for eggplant. 
Oh, yeah, for sure. I bet you they have books of eggplant recipes, right? <laughs> like just eggplants. <laughs> eggplant cookbooks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I want to hear more about this marathon. Sure, Sue. I'll tell you all about the marathon in just a moment. But before I do that, I want to let all of our listeners know that there is a study guide for this episode and you can download it from our website, qlips.com. It's awesome. It's designed especially for QLips listeners and we think you'll find it very, very helpful. So if you want to check that out, just visit qlips.com and give it a download. Did you train? Yeah, I, I just jog as a hobby. So I, I jog maybe three to four times a week. And I knew that the event was coming up, so I had it in mind. But I'm not a professional athlete or anything. I know some people have really strict running routines where they'll do lots of different training exercises. Yes. And yes. I think that's a great idea and I should be doing that, but I haven't really started any of that training yet. I just run. <laughs> I just run regularly. Um, and that's about the only training that I did uh, before this. And then did you like sign up for the race? What did you have to do? I signed up, I registered online, and I originally was supposed to run this with my coworker. Um, he signed up as well, and he was actually nagging me to, to sign up. So I signed up and paid <laughs> because there's a registration <laughs> fee. He right. didn't pay, he just signed up. And then the deadline for the payment passed, and he forgot to oh, pay, no. so he wasn't allowed to participate, which meant that I was running alone. <laughs> Ugh, that's off. I mean, it's not awful, but it's just, you know, it's a long run to when you anticipate that you will run with someone else and then suddenly you're alone. That's hard. Yeah. Well, I don't want to put him down, but. I wasn't anticipating to run with him anyways. I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit faster than he is, so I, I knew that I would be running alone. But it's still fun to have a friend at the events. And actually, there sure. were a couple of other people at the event that I knew, so that was cool. But um, yeah, I was, I was technically not running with the friend who convinced me to sign up. Yeah. Yeah, so everyone was on pins and needles before the race because uh, there was actually a typhoon that passed through the day before the marathon. So, oh, you know, wow. the day before, we were all like, oh, is this going to happen? Is it going to be canceled due to rain and especially the really strong winds? Um, yeah. It would be very, very unpleasant to spend a morning running in <laughs> in yeah. typhoon strength winds so yeah I was worried about that but it turned out to be an absolutely beautiful day the weather was perfect the temperature was perfect and I arrived at the marathon starting line about an hour before the race and okay there was tons of people there already um, and a lot of guys wearing really short shorts <laughs> <laughs> that always makes me nervous because I think the shorter your shorts the faster <laughs> you are as a runner <laughs> there's I don't know but there's yeah, a connection I, hear you. I think <laughs> I, I see that with people who are cyclists when uh -huh. they are wearing more 
tight cyclist gear that they should be mm-hmm. really good, but that's not always the case, as we know. <laughs> Just because they have cool clothes doesn't make them better athletes. Mm, it, it's totally true. And well, you really notice that when when you participate in an event like this, um, there's a lot of guys that are decked out in the best running shoes and the coolest running watches and like great yeah. wireless headphones and super nice sunglasses. And you're like, man, this guy means business. And yeah. then you pass him and never see him again. Cause he's too slow. So yeah, it, it, <laughs> the, the gear doesn't make an athlete. <laughs> no, I mean, it can add confidence maybe, or fun, yeah, you know, well, it's cool but, to look cool too. I mean, I want all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, totally. So the race uh, was a half marathon, which is just slightly over 21 kilometers. Right. And I've done one half marathon before this year in the spring. And my my time was one hour and 35 minutes. So it's not terrible, but not anything to write home about. So right. I set a new goal of one hour and 30 minutes that was my goal to finish in an hour and a half and running is kind of a cool sport because you can compete against yourself and the other runners so yes yes um, it's true at the end of the day my goal was to beat that record and get 130 but it's also fun to try and go as fast as you can and beat other people (laughs) I'm, yeah. I am just a competitive person, so I like that element as well. Um as for the race, it it was difficult, like I said, the weather was beautiful, but when you're running really hard for a long distance, uh, it's not fun. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. fun about it to me. I'm <laughs> breathing hard and and struggling and it, it, it's a battle, but I ended up starting too fast, I think. Uh, That was a poor strategy for me. I got into the leading group with the the fast guys, and I ran with them for about five kilometers, and then I just couldn't maintain their pace. They weren't faster than me, but they had much better endurance than me. So I just had to let them go. (laughs) Yeah, that's the tricky part, right? Is like really yeah. pacing yourself and making sure oh. that you don't give too much of yourself right away. Since this is only my second half marathon, I think I'll get better with experience trying to figure out the pacing, but mm-hmm. I realized in retrospect that was a mistake. So I started off way too fast and then about five kilometers in I felt really gassed really tired and I slowed my pace down for about a kilometer or two caught my breath and then tried to pick it up to a speed that was fast but that I thought that I could maintain for the rest of the race that's good yeah good I feel like I'm in a really weird zone where I'm not as fast as the best guys but I'm faster than most people and that made it so that I was alone (laughs) like (laughs) I could see nobody in front of me when I turned my head to look back there's nobody behind me um I did at one point around kilometer 18 okay so almost at the end some guy okay. came out of nowhere and passed me. <laughs> and okay. I was like, oh, no, I'm <laughs> slowing down. Where did this guy come from? That was the only other racer I saw after I let the, the leading pack go. And then I was really proud of myself. Right at the very end, I gave it my all and I passed him back. <laughs> so I didn't let that guy beat me. Um, but the race was good. It was really fun. I managed to beat the goal that I set for myself. I finished in an hour and 26 minutes 
and 34 seconds. So I was oh, really wow. happy That's about great. that. And I came in 13th place overall, and I won wow. that big box of eggplants. <laughs> that is so great, Andrew. Like, I see in New York, the New York Marathon is really a special time. It's usually in November, the first weekend mm-hmm. of November, when it's like um, not too hot to run, you know, that much, and not too cold yet either. And one of my favorite things is to cheer people on. And usually people have like their names on their shirts and things like that. So you can, or their nickname. So you can be like, go, John, go. Like, <laughs> you, you, you got this. And, and you, they really get into it. Like there's millions and millions of people out on the street that day cheering you on all throughout all of the boroughs. And it's such an exciting thing, I think, for runners because the vibrancy of the city is really out. There are bands playing. Some of them are famous bands. It's quite an an event. I just was wondering, because I love to cheer the runners on, did you have people cheering you on? Did you notice the crowds being kind of, I don't know, like boisterous? (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) not to the same extent as the New York marathon. (laughs) I'm sure. I know. I hope someday you get to, if you ever do run a full marathon, that you get to do that. It's, it's, I heard it's one of the best ones. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to do that. Or, well, there's, there's a famous author, uh, Haruki Murakami. Yeah. That I'm sure a lot of our listeners are familiar with, especially our Japanese listeners. And he wrote a book about running it's a book about running and um he he mentions running in the new york city marathon in that book and it when i read that i was like man i i gotta run in the new york city marathon one day it sounded amazing yeah it's it's pretty special yeah but to answer your question yeah there's people at the aid stations so there were aid stations every two and a half kilometers where you can get some water or I think they had some snacks too and when you're coming up to the aid station it's really great because the people cheer for you and since I'm in Korea I spell my name on my bib in Korean so (laughs) people people can read my name on my bib and cheer me on as I'm coming up and it's so weird But it honestly gives you a little boost. You're like, you want to do better when people cheer you on. So that's really helpful. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, (laughs) yeah, it was a good good day of running. And now I am looking forward to next year because next year is when I'm going to try the full marathon. I think I'm finally ready. It's a totally different event and the length the distance scares me a lot because I'm so tired after 21. I can't imagine doing 42, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll figure that out. Uh, step by step. Time. Step by yeah. step. Yeah. You don't have to <laughs> bite it all off at once. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sue, thanks for listening to me talk about the half marathon and about eggplants. And I love it. And thank you to all of the listeners as well. I would love to know if there's any runners out there or any yeah. athletes out there. Uh, feel free to get in touch with us and share your stories. Our email address is contact at qlips.com. We're also all over the internet on social media instagram facebook twitter youtube feel free to search for qlips english podcast on your favorite social media site and you will be sure to find us 
if you'd like to improve your English and study along with this episode a bit closer, you can download the study guide at qlips.com. And we'll see you soon on the next podcast episode. Sounds good to me. Talk to you <laughs> soon, guys. Bye. Bye.